days. We love it. It was great. Eleanor had put together the itinerary and everything, and it was just fabulous to be a part of that. Many of you have been to Disneyland, and you've seen and experienced all the different uh, things that go on there. It's interesting walking up and down the streets of Buena Vista Street and Main Street and Frontierland and all these places and just listening to the families as you pass by them and the crying and the whining that goes on. I don't want to do that. My feet are sore. I want to eat. I don't want to go on that ride. Let's go over here. And that's just the dad's. One man's dream, in fact, what they do, they have in a place, they have the, the very park bench where he was sitting, Walt Disney, when he said, why don't we have something for adults? And you can sit down there alongside it and see one man's dream, the magic. And then at the end of the night, when the fireworks goes off, as people leave and goes into all of these different uh, places, <laughs> the frenzy to buy something. I just need to buy something wherever you are. I went into one store, not to buy, not to buy. And then you stand in a place where there's nobody and all these people milling around and pretty soon after a minute or two you have to move because everybody comes to your section and you have to move on. Everybody just has to uh, to buy something on their last night or their the, de the end of the day, just the frenzy that they go through. One man's dream. Jesus didn't have a dream. He had a mission. And his mission was to save us from hell. Good Friday. What a wonderful day that is. And as we sit there and think, today at noon, the sun closed in. And for three hours, Jesus suffered an agonized for you and for me and for this entire world. And the product of our remembrance today is what he has done for us. How precious. Easter. Easter's coming. Easter's coming. Nobody believed it. No one believed it. And he came out of the grave successful, alive, forevermore. What a God, what a God. Uh, Easter, which we celebrated last week, how beautiful it is. And then this is the anniversary of another incident that takes place, and that is Thomas. The disciples rushed over and said, we have seen Jesus. And he says, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. That was last Sunday. And then throughout the week, as they were saying, no, we saw him. He went from disbelief to doubting, and then Jesus presented himself to him and said, don't doubt any longer. And he said, my Lord and my God. Oh, he was the most traveled apostle, the most traveled disciple, as he just said, I can't do enough for Jesus. How precious those things to be a disciple of Jesus. What a blessed privilege. <clears throat> you know, we have friends and heroes. What a privilege to, to be in their company. I don't know if you like the Sedines or whatever, but just to, you know, be along. Maybe they would walk in someday and say, Hey, Ian, how are you doing? Hey, good to see you. And everybody crowd around them. Then they'd look at you and say, Wow. Wow, you must really be somebody. And here we have God Almighty. And he starts selecting some men to be with him. Twelve of them. Twelve of them. And as we heard, as Jonathan has presented us, one, because of his willfulness, he went to hell. And yet God had selected him to go to heaven. He didn't get there went to hell. Jesus 
was a rabbi, a very good teacher. And so what rabbis did in those days, they would come along and they would ask certain people and they would gather around him. Jesus operated under a different system. These rabbis would say, well, rabbi so-and-so said this, and rabbi so-and-so said this, and rabbi so-and-so said this, and so we come to this conclusion. Jesus did it a little differently. He says, I say to you, the Sermon on the Mount, which happens in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, the end of it, after Jesus finished that simple they said, oh, he spoke with authority. He spoke with authority. Because he's God. He spoke with authority on the Old Testament and what it meant because he wrote it as God and then presented it to people. And he said, I want to tell you what it's like. And Jesus comes along and he says, I'm going to pass on to certain men all that I know, I'm going to pass on to them. You know, these disciples, they got very upset many times. I mean, he upset the nation. He upset different places. He said to Bethsaida, Capernaum rather, you think you're so good, you've rejected me. You'll be cast down to hell. We, we have two choices, God or nothing for all eternity. And, and that boldness that God spoke at that time, it's black and it's white. It's glorious or it's sinfulness. And God said, that's the choice. And he drew these men to himself. Listen, they had as much time, uh, much trouble or more with Jesus than the crowds did. Because he told them some very bold things. He said, first of all, I want you to follow me. I want you to be with me. And I want you to be devoted to me. We're going to read about it in the book of Luke. Luke chapter 5. And Jesus starts collecting his disciples. Now a good thing to know about Luke chapter 5, starting at verse 1. He primed them. He gave them an inkling of, of himself. Because he said that uh, he had been teaching, he had been talking to them, but then he said, okay boys, now you must follow me. Matthew chapter 5. So it wasn't out of a, a fog, it was out of a priming. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, which is the Sea of Galilee, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats. He left, left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats. He didn't even ask. He just got into the boat. The one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. They, did, they were crowding him. He just got out there a little bit further so they couldn't splash in the water. He's addressing them. After that, when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put it into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, you're a carpenter and I'm a fisherman. <laughs> Master, we work hard all night, haven't caught anything. Well, because you say so, I will let down the nets. And when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. <clears throat> so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled their boat so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid, from now on you will catch men. So they pulled up their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. Go over to verse 27. After this, <clears throat> after a healing of a man with leprosy, after the healing of this paralytic, Jesus walks out, he went on the way, and he saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, he said. Jesus said to him, 
<clears throat> and Levi got up, left everything, and followed him. And then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house, and a large crowd of tax collectors and others were eating with him. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, who belonged to their sect, complained to his disciples, Why do you eat and drink with tax collectors and sinners? <laughs> And one of the other versions is, why do you eat with such scum? <laughs> yes, they said that to the disciples. And what did Jesus, Jesus overhears them and he says, it is not the healthy who need the doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. <clears throat> Most of the trades that I know of, plumbing, electrical, woodworking, and other things like that, <clears throat> you're apprenticed to a tradesman. And that tradesman's job is to give you all the information he can, or she can, let's be correct on that, <clears throat> so that you may be like him. And most of the people that I've studied or looked at, they're so happy to give out their knowledge. My grandmother, who I never met, was a French polisher. She would come to a piece of furniture, and through all the concoctions and, and process, she would make it shine like a mirror. It's, it's a certain trade. My mom, when she was a little girl, would watch this with fascination. And as my grandmother would be working away, she would notice her daughter, her daughter, her young daughter watching her and she would turn her body in such a way that she couldn't see what she was doing. Didn't want to let this secret out. <laughs> and if you go to Japan and want to be a woodworker over there, you apprentice the first year you sweep the floor. And you look out of the corner of your eye at these tradesmen and you watch what they're doing without them seeing because as soon as they see that you're watching them they will turn their back on you so you can't actually see it and that's what some trades are like well most of them are generous Jesus was generous he told them everything he told them everything he was frank and open with them he wanted them to be learners he wanted them to get the message. Oh, what a hard group they were. <laughs> His disciples. What a blessed privilege they had to be surrounding Jesus. And yet how difficult it was for them to get the message. The kingdom of God isn't a lot of politics here. It's the hearts of people. That's what I want to affect here. You see in verse 3, that he has been speaking. He got into one of the boats, belonged to Simon, put out a little from shore, and he began to teach the people. His words had power. Never forget, you got to be careful. You must be careful of opening up this book and reading it, because God has said, I will accomplish what I want with that words. Now maybe in this room, everybody here is thinking about other things. Oh yes, I remember going to Disneyland. Oh yes, I remember fishing and all of those things. Maybe your mind is in mind. Maybe there's one person here and God is saying, listen to what I'm saying out of my word. And, and God says, the word just doesn't go into the air. It goes into hearts and will accomplish what I want. And Jesus was speaking to the people and when he had finished speaking, he said, I not only have power of my words, I have power over nature. Put the nets down over here in the deep water, and let's see what we'll catch. And Peter, of course, protests. I worked hard all night, haven't caught anything. Okay, because you say so, I'll do it. Okay, so he lets down the nets. And he was with his brother Andrew, the two of them. And verse 6, when they caught such a large amount of fish, they had to signal to their partners, James and John, get the boat, hurry, get over here, because we can't take all this in. And they were pulling the nets into their boat, and the boat was sinking. Could you imagine having that many fish? Oh, how wonderful it would be. And then the other boat comes over, and they get all this, 
and the boats are loaded just a little way offshore. They start to paddle back to shore, and Peter bows down. I wonder if you'd say this to him. Verse 8, when Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Do you realize the holiness of God? When, when we get alone with God and when he, he, he speaks through his word, he does something that just is beyond humanity. It's Godness, spiritual. And, and we're overcome with the magnitude of God. I wonder if some of us would say, Jesus, oh, what a great catch. <laughs> you want to come here tomorrow morning at 9 and we'll do it all over again? <laughs> Wouldn't you think that? Uh, we have to understand something. Success. Success comes from God. Whether it's catching fish or catching men, teaching the Word of God, or just being a Christian example in this world. It's all from God. Precious. Precious. Let's exalt the name of Jesus. But if we're in business, it's success from Him. You know, <clears throat> sometimes you see the baseball season has just started. And sometimes you see a guy going around third, he just hit a home run, and he comes across the plate and he goes, I don't know why the cameras don't go up there. What is he, what's he doing? You kind of get the idea? Somebody <clears throat> scores a touchdown in football, he's running across, oh, and he gets down on his knee, he goes, success. Have you ever seen a businessman driving home, come into the driveway, get out of the car, get down on his knees and go, usually what happens is, he runs in the house, you can't believe the day we had at work today. What a wonderful day we had. The sales, I mean, oh, it was just fabulous. How often do we back up from all the blessings of life and say, God, thank you. Thank you. And Peter is saying, wow. Wow. How precious. How precious. <laughs> Would you ask him for more fish? <laughs> they had to drag it up on shore. What a blessed privilege. And look what it says. They pulled their boats up on shore. They left everything and followed him. The secret of success with Jesus is to follow him. Oh, but Jesus wasn't finished with getting people. In verse 27, he talks about another man. And Jesus went out and saw a tax collector by the name of Levi sitting at the tax. Follow me, he says. Follow me. Now Levi, his other name is Matthew. He wrote the first book of the New Testament. And he was steeped in, in the, the, the knowledge of the Old Testament and of, of the Hebrew Word of God. And so when he wrote, he wrote from all the, the Old Testament scriptures. He had it in mind. He knew what he was talking about. And he was primed as well. Just before this, there was some men, five men, came to Jesus, couldn't get into the house. But they went up on the roof and... The roof opens up. The dirt falls down. People say, what on earth is going on? And, and these four men, friends, let this... <coughs> can hardly get it out of my mouth. Oh, let them down in front of him. And as he's being lowered... Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> and the religious people says, hold on, what do you mean? Your sins are forgiven. <laughs> your sins are forgiven. I have power to say your sins are forgiven. I'll prove it to you. Get up and walk. And the man got up and walked out the door. I've always wondered, why didn't they just wait? Why didn't they sit outside and say, okay, he's good. he can't talk forever. He'll come out soon. But their passion was to get this man healed now. 
And so they broke open the roof, and Jesus was delighted. Everybody else was dusted, but he was delighted and let him down, and he healed the man. And, and the news, did you hear what happened? Did you hear what happened? And Levi hears all this, and he sees, and he's listened to Jesus before. He's primed. He's primed. So when Jesus walks along, he says, follow me. And the Greek puts it this way. Get the, get the right order. And Levi abandoned everything, got up, and followed Jesus. He made up his mind, I'm going to follow Jesus. But he abandoned everything. He pushed everything away and got up and followed Jesus. Isn't that a beautiful place to be? Well, we can say to God, okay, all of this, if you so wish, I will push it off to the side. My future, all the benefits I have, I'll put that off to the side so that I can follow you. That was the passion of his heart, to follow Jesus. And he got up and followed him. Then what happens? Then he has a banquet at his house in verse 28. Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. The first alpha right there. See, the first alpha right there. And, and there it is, the Alpha program, just right out of the blue. Levi wanted to tell his friends, you've got to hear this man. You've got to understand him. So he invited his friends. Who were his friends? Tax collectors and sinners. <laughs> the scum, as the religious people said. Yes. And he had this blessed privilege of not only following Jesus, but telling his friends. Oh, yes. And then the criticisms come. And, and when you follow Jesus, they will come. They will come. And the religious people said, Why do you eat with tax collectors and sinners? To his five new five disciples. And Jesus overhears them and he says, Listen, I didn't come to call righteous people. I call, came to call those in a miserable condition. If you're good enough in yourself, God says, I can't save you. Oh, what a thing to think of. God says, I can't save you until you give up all of that. And these people from that society, they said, we want it. We want to hear about it. There was a, a man who was leading a group of young men and they gave out tracts every day. And one night they came back and one man said, I gave out 500 gospel tracts today. I gave out 500. Yes, oh, that's wonderful. Good. He says, I, this old man, gave out a thousand gospel tracts today. Oh, you're not going to let an old guy like me give out more tracts than you, right? <laughs> Now there is that thinking in our mind, oh, I got to get the gospel out there. But the mystery isn't the leading people to Christ. That's not what our job is. Our job is to love people to Christ. They are not projects. They're people who need the sacrifice of Christ to be explained to them, but lived in front of them. And Levi had his friends, or you got to hear Jesus. But they were his friends, and he was passionate about it. His blessed privilege of speaking this message. You ever had a campfire? We've all had campfires, right? You sit around, and oh, at the end of the day, you're shivering. It's a little cold, chilly. But you have the fire going and a couple of hot dogs and everything. Everybody's sitting around. Everybody's relaxed. Everybody's relaxed. And some of the older kids are sitting there. They want to be close by the parents. You just talk. There's no arguments at a campfire. You just talk, talk. Jesus had campfires too. Did you know that? Yeah, as he traveled different places, he had the campfire going. And the disciples sat around. There was On this side, there was uh, Andrew. 
and uh, Peter and James and John and on his side was Levi the tax collector hmm. the tax collector <laughs> who wants to be friends with him wouldn't you love to get your hands around the person who put the gas up to a dollar five uh, a buck and a half uh, a liter yes and it is you know just for a short time but anyway it took him a long time to welcome that Levi because when they pulled that p portion of fish up he'd walk along and say oh yes and the government wants to take 20 percent we worked all night we've worked all night and you want 20 percent yeah I want 20 percent so they had to dish out the fish then they started going into town they took the cart into town he said hold it hold it there's a Roman road you got to pay five percent they said we're working here yes I know you're working here tax don't we love it this is a true story it happened two years apart in my home at my kitchen table my two oldest after high school got jobs this this it's hilarious how similar it was and the oldest one came and sat down and said oh this is my first pick do you know how much money they take off in taxes I said yes I think I have a fair idea and two years later the number two do you know how much much money they take off in taxes yes I kind of get the message the taxes we hate them right but we have enough money to pay for them because they do a lot of things right but here's this tax collector and not only did he take the 20 percent here and the 5 percent there he took a little bit for himself you see and he and and all of the people in his household tax collectors and others they were the lowest of the low they were the lowest of the low indeed they were the scum and yet God says I want that scum in heaven and he picked one of them out blessed privilege a disciple of Jesus isn't it here's something that's very interesting you want something interesting I'll tell you something interesting the word disciple appears in Matthew Mark Luke and John and Acts and you got all these different disciple 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 you get to the book of Acts and disciple and disciple and then pretty soon it stops in chapter 21 and it never mentions disciples after that for all the churches it's interesting. disciples 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 and then disciples and then but Jesus uses another word a most beautiful word he starts by saying believers believers and that is the word that he uses for all of his church over here I want this man and this man and this man and this man I want these 12 to be close to me but on the other side in the epistles the letters to the churches he says we're all believers in Christ as soon as we put our trust in him we're his believers in this world and our whole life has been changed radicalized where does it start it starts over here believe on the Lord Jesus Christ thou shalt be saved that's starting and then after that you're a believer he uses other words too what a precious word that is believers believers we're all there and the closeness that I want to get to Jesus is up to me I don't have to be picked out I don't have to be made oh there's Jesus and the 12 no 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 it's me and it's you and that blessed privilege of being God's special people is all of ours that blessed privilege to be intimate with God to do God's work to be close to him you know the only limitation is what you put on it God says I've given you everything I've given you my precious word I've given you my spirit within you I've done everything I can and if you stand before me one day and are making excuses 
for how little you learned of me and followed me in your life. It's all the blame on you. Look at this. He did everything. It's finished. He did everything. And when we don't pursue Christ or follow him or believe in him, that's our own fault. You know, it's as simple as, as getting to know God as taking 15 minutes every day. Five minutes of worshiping him. Maybe even with a song, just singing a song of worship as we did this morning. Or five minutes opening up the Bible to one of the Psalms where it talks about the preciousness of God. Five minutes of worshiping God and just extolling his beauty. And then five minutes of reading the scriptures go consecutively through a book and in five minutes of praying we have many people to pray for and, and many people need our prayers 15 minutes, five minutes of worship five minutes of reading the scriptures and five minutes of praying and bringing before the Lord these things, the limits our lack is our own fault God says I want you to be a blessing to me and a blessing to all others there's no excuse for not coming close to Jesus. We weren't picked out. Oh yes, we were. We didn't walk around with Jesus, but we can have even a greater blessing today because we walk with Jesus. We're following him. We're his believers in this world. No excuse. No excuse. God help us. Amen.